video game protagonists tend to act as the heroes of their stories, saving the world from a looming disaster and rescuing helpless NPCs in their time of need. Because you do all the hard work, you expect some modicum of gratitude from the people you help. And while most of them like to show it to you with gifts and kind words, there are also some rotten apples in the bunch. Every now and then you end up helping an NPC who feels like your good deed to them is a service and not an act of kindness. You put your blood, sweat and tears into doing their bidding and the only thing you get in return is empty pockets and an insufferable attitude. I'm Jess from What Culture, and here are 10 ungrateful video game NPCs that deserved worse. Number 10, Arthur, Fallout New Vegas. The Caesars Legion faction in Fallout New Vegas has a somewhat complicated relationship with women, meaning that they treat all women as servants and slaves, but are still completely fine with the female courier solving all their issues for them. The hypocrisy of the Legion is as blatantly obvious as an NCR soldier's desire for a nuclear winter, and yet it's not even nearly as bad as the ungratefulness and preachy attitude of one specific member, Otho, the master of the Legion's arena. If you play as a female courier, Otho will refuse to let you participate in the fights that are happening there, saying that fighting is a man's job and you should stick to quote, cooking pots. Right, seems no one told Arthur that it was a woman who killed all of the Legion's political opponents, secured several important alliances and saved Caesar's life. The poor guy was probably too busy cowering in his Boy Scout fight club to get the memo. Of course, no matter how much you do for the Legion, Otho will not let you in. And if you try to kill him, the Legion will consider it treason. There's really no justice in the wasteland. Number 9. Sabal and Amita, Far Cry 4 Amita and Sabal are the two leaders of the Golden Path Rebels in Far Cry 4. The protagonist, RJ, joins their cause shortly after arriving in Karat, waging war against Pagan Min's regime under their command. It might seem like you're doing the right thing by fighting alongside the Golden Path, but the truth is that their co-leaders are the most treacherous and ungrateful characters in the whole game, even more so than its supposed antagonist. They'll occasionally say their thanks to RJ for basically winning the entire conflict for them, but as soon as you help them achieve their goal, Goals, their true colors begin to shine. When Pagan's reign is close to its end, Amita and Sabal tell RJ to kill the other rebel leader, as they see each other as competition for the soon to be empty throne. If you refuse either of them, they immediately turn on you and show that in reality, you were just a pawn to them all along. So you have to do their bidding and kill one to let the other become Kirat's new dictator. How about giving the throne to the guy who single-handedly conquered all enemy outposts and won the war? Just an idea. Number 8. Jimmy and Tracy de Santa, Grand Theft Auto 5. The personal storyline of Michael, one of Grand Theft Auto 5's three main protagonists, mostly revolves around solving his family's toxic dynamic. After years of hiding from Michael's criminal past, his wife Amanda has become estranged, and his two kids, Jimmy and Tracy, have turned into spoiled teens who hate their father, but aren't above asking him for money to feed whatever whim they have. Over the course of the game, Michael's relationship with his family improves drastically, and his kids change their mindset a little. However, at their core, they still remain the same jade and ungrateful brats that they were in the beginning. They might start acting better after you finish the mission where Michael reunites his family, but when you hang out with Jimmy as Trevor, he admits that in reality, he still hates his father and he'd rather use him to live an easy life. Honestly, Michael and his family should get a happy ending, but the one you get is only an illusion. It does feel as though Jimmy and Tracy probably needed something worse than a slap on the wrist to actually learn their lesson. Number 7. Marcy Long, Fallout 4 Living in the post-apocalyptic world of Fallout 4 would make anybody cranky, what with all the radiation and super mutants trying to eat you and all your relatives. However, Fallout 4 features one particularly nasty NPC that pushes the line between mere grumpiness and unwarranted spite. One of the settlers you rescue in the first Minutemen mission in Concord, Marcy Long, is a constant nagging Nancy who loves to complain and blame you for her misfortune, no matter what you do. You can save her life, help her people establish a new place to live, and even turn her new home into the safest and most prosperous place in the Commonwealth, but Marcy will still keep commenting on how bad things are and how you're really not helping. You might say her attitude is justified as she's been through a lot, but all the other survivors in her group eventually warm up to you and say their thanks. Meanwhile, Marcy will only begrudgingly express gratitude and then go right back to complaining. Well, maybe if everything is so terrible for her, she deserves to live in a roofless shed. Number 6. Darius Kwan, Wasteland 3 
The fun thing about Wasteland 3's companions is that, depending on which faction they're loyal to, they might end up betraying you in the final mission of the game. The most extreme case here is Darius Kwan, one of the Patriarch's marshals, who will always abandon your team if you choose to rebel against his boss, no matter how good your relationship with him is. His betrayal can feel especially hurtful if you spent the whole game helping him with his personal issues. You seem to bond over things like solving cases for his faction and even giving Quan a chance to spend some quality time with a girl he has a crush on. But in the end, Quan cares about all of this only as much as his despotic leader allows him to. It doesn't even matter if you expose the Patriarch's dirty secrets in front of him. The guy simply won't budge and will stab you in the back as if you haven't done more for him than all of his faction combined. You know things are bad when even your team drunkard and cannibal show more gratitude for your friendship than he does. Number 5. Ms. Grimshaw, Red Dead Redemption 2 Ms. Grimshaw from Red Dead Redemption 2 is hated among the game's player base more due to gameplay reasons than the story. As one of the few female members of Dutch's gang as well as Dutch's old flame, Susan Grimshaw takes it upon herself to look after the gang's camp and ensure it's stocked with supplies and funds. Now this is all nice, but sometimes, read all the time, Ms. Grimshaw can get way too demanding when it comes to asking you for contributions to the camp. No matter how many thousands of dollars you donate or how many pounds of meat for and general supplies you bring, Miss Grimshaw will always make a comment about how little you contribute and how you should try to make yourself more useful. Oh really, Miss Grimshaw? The guy who personally delivers half of the local fauna to Pearson and bankrolls all of Dutch's funds could be more productive? What about the dozen or so deadbeats who sit at camp all day playing dominoes and knife games? You know, maybe if Arthur actually stopped funding the game's entire existence, Miss Grimshaw could finally learn to be a bit more appreciative. Number 4. Isolde, Dragon Age Origins Compared to its sequels, Dragon Age Origins has a slightly darker tone, so you naturally shouldn't expect all the NPCs to be nice and upstanding people. This said, some of them can be downright insufferable, as is the case with Azold, the wife of Al Amon, your ally throughout the main story. When you visit the Al's village to ask for his support, you'll discover that Amon has fallen sick and his castle has become infested with hordes of undead that terrorize his people every night. What's the source of this nightmare? His reckless and over for protective wife. It turns out Isolde discovered her son is a mage and out of fear of the Templars taking him away, she kept it a secret from everyone until the kid was eventually contacted by a demon who possessed his body and used it to raise an army of dead. When you arrive to fix Isolde's messes, she pretty much never expresses gratitude or even apologizes for the deaths she's caused. All she's concerned with is her family. Which is why if you feel spiteful, you can let her sacrifice her own life in a blood ritual to save her son from the demon one last time, which Alistair is stoked about. Number 3. Margaret, The Witcher 3 the side quests in The Witcher 3 are full of surprises, and the quest Wild at Heart is no different. It begins with Geralt tracking a missing girl and ends with fighting a werewolf who, spoiler alert, was tricked into killing his wife by her jealous sister Margaret. Now this is already enough to nominate Margaret for the worst sister of 1272, but what makes this character all the more aggravating is the disgust and ingratitude with which she treats Geralt. Because she's in love with Neelan, the werewolf, she suspects Geralt will want to kill him and purposefully leads him astray in his investigation, even though the Witcher could easily attempt to cure him of his curse as well. Her lack of appreciation for Geralt's help eventually leads to a confrontation between Margaret and Neelan, in which the girl admits to tricking him into murdering her sister. Unless Geralt intervenes, the werewolf can kill her for what she's made him do to the love of his life. It's a gruesome end, but let's be honest, Margaret deserves way worse for all the murder and manipulation she committed for the sake of her make-believe relationship with Neelan. Number 2. Mayrina, Baldur's Gate 3 being a hero in Baldur's Gate 3 can feel pretty rewarding, as the people you aid are generally grateful for your help and give you something in return for it. Well, that is until you come across Mayrena. That's when indulging your dark urges, if you're able to, suddenly feels like a much better alternative. Mayrena is a young pregnant woman who's trapped inside the hag's house in the first act of the game. The more chivalrous players may feel inclined to rescue Mayrena, and while you certainly can, you shouldn't expect her to act as thankful as your typical NPC. PC in peril. When you slay the hag and help Mayrina out of her cage, instead of a reward or even a simple thank you, the girl lashes out at you angrily for ruining her deal with her captor. It turns out Mayrina wanted to give away her baby to the hag in exchange for bringing her dead husband back. 
Despite the fact that the hag was trying to kill her and the two of you were surrounded by living evidence of her treachery, like the one she intended to use to bring Mayrina's husband back, only as a zombie, Mayrina will refuse to listen to reason and act as if you ruined her life. Sure, there's a chance she rocks up later and actually gives you something, but you know what? You might be so mad you wish you let the hag have her. Number one, Delphine, the Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. If you were to ask Skyrim players who the most annoying NPC in the game is, most wouldn't take long to say Delphine. Or Nazim or Belithor. God, there's a lot of terrible people in this game. Anyway, we're focusing on Delphine. Delphine is one of the last few surviving members of a secret organization tasked with protecting Emperor Tiber Septim and any dragonborn that came after him. So what does Delphine do when she meets your character, the last dragonborn of legends? She orders you around, constantly putting Tamriel's last line of defense against dragons in danger and giving you a ton of unwanted attitude for it. But that's not even the most hateable part of her character. It's the fact that Delphine always acts like she's smarter and better than you, even though she's consistently wrong. She makes you infiltrate a hostile embassy on nothing but a misguided hunch and forces you to prove your very obvious shouty dragon powers by slaying a dragon. And when her plans turn out to be a waste of time, she only berates you and acts like it's your fault. Unfortunately, just like Skyrim's many annoying children, Delphine cannot be killed, which makes sense considering she acts like one. That's the end of our list, but let me know down in that comment section which ungrateful video game NPC you need to rant about and we're all here for you. As always, I've been Jess from What Culture. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. If you like, you can say hi to me on my Twitter account where I'm at Jess McDonald or Twitch where I'm Tempertress. Make sure you stick with us here for plenty more gaming goodness.